Bruchim Aboim. Thank you for coming. We are now on, again in our Gematria series. This is lecture number 17. And we are on the number, uh, Hebrew number 15. Um, again, tonight we're going to talk about the number 15. In Hebrew, it's called Chamisha Asar, which is 5 plus 10. Uh, there are those who do not use that formula of calling it Chamisha Asar. Instead, they call it Tet Vav, which is Tet is 9 plus 6. And the question is why? Why is there a differentiation between these two? They're all both 15. So we have discussed before that the letters Yud and He are very special. Together they spell one of God's holy names that we do not erase. This is the name that we refer to when we mention creation. Our rabbis tell us the guy created this world with a He and the world above with a Yud. So as not to use God's name in vain, so therefore there are those that use a Tet and above 9 and 6, again 15, where God's name is then that is uh, hidden. The letters Tet and Vav are special in their own right. The letter Tet in Hebrew, in the Hebrew alphabet, has a numerical value of 9. As we mentioned before, the word Emet, Aleph, Mem, Tof, has a numerical value uh, 441. Again, the name, the word Emet is truth. If you add it across. So you have the numerical value of 9, and the word sheker, false, shin kuf resh, has numerical value of 600. In Mispar Kutten, we drop, as we've mentioned before, the zeros. And so, false is connected to the number 6. What I find interesting is that in the English numbers, the number 9 and 6 are real, really identical. The 6 is just upside down. And that is the challenge of life being able to find that which is definitively true. Our evil inclination, our Yetzirah tells us that false is really true. It just fell over. The period of a full lunar month is 30 days. And these 30 days are divided into two equal and different parts, starting with a sliver of a crescent until it grows into a full moon and then reverses the order until it disappears from sight. Fifteen generations can represent the pinnacle of success of the Jewish nation, starting from Abram Avinu, Abraham our father, growing from generation to generation until they reach the pinnacle during the reign of Shlomo HaMelech, King Solomon. He brought what we call the Shekhinah, the divine presence of God, to rest. He had to rest in the first temple which he built. This is similar to the bright moonlight that one sees on the 15th day of the month. Over the next 15 generations, things degenerated, much like the waning of the moon, until in the 30th generation, the first temple was destroyed and the nation was exiled. 15 represents the gematria for the word hod, meaning glory, splendor, majesty, beauty, grandeur, magnificence, and majestic splendor. When the Kohanim, the priests, would bless the people, as they do still today, what we call duchening, they begin with a bracha that ends with the word bi'ahava, which means with love. That's the only way they can bless the people if they love the people. Bi'ahava is a numerical value of 15. Now the lifespans of the, our forefathers, Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, overlap by 15 years. All three of them existed, they were in the world together. Asa was 15, uh, again, the, the uh, twin to Yaakov, the, the son of Yitzchak, uh, was 15 years old when he committed five major sins on the same day. Now, the reason that the nation of Israel was chosen by God was because of the three Avot, the four fathers, and the 12 tribes, 3 and 12, 15. Yishmael, the son, first son of Abravinu, was 15 years old when he brought an image from the market he began to worship it. The Gemara and Sota, the Talmud, states that for a couple to have a successful marriage, they must include a relationship with God. Both man and woman share the same root to their names, Aish, Olive Shin, which means fire, the battle of the sexes. So, to bring peace and harmony into the marriage, God added a Yud from his name to man's name and changing the name, the word Aish, fire, into Ish, man. God also added a He from his name to the end of a woman's name, 
changing the Eish fire into Isha, to woman. Now a wife is called an Ateret Bala, the crown of her husband. In fact, the rabbis also tell us that Ishto Kugufo Dummy, that a man's wife uh, is his, uh, is it, the, that a man's wife is his own, is his life, own, own body, is considered like his, himself. So if a man puts himself first, and the over Ish, and then the word Isha, then there, then the He and the Yud that God added to their names, is separated by three letters, so as if they're erasing it. However, if a man puts his wife first, then you have the name Isha first, and then Ish. Then the Yud and the He are separated by one letter, which is an Aleph, which always alludes to God, who brings peace between them. There is a positive myth called the Leverite marriage. If a man dies without any children, then it becomes a mitzvah for a brother to either marry a sister-in-law, which is called Yibum, or to free her to marry someone else. The ritual of relieving the brother-in-law of his obligation to marry the widow is called Chalitza. Now in the time when polygamy was legal, there were actually 15 categories of women that exempted their rivals from having to go through this ceremony. Again, today we do not do yibum, we do not marry a sister-in-law, but we do chalitza, it's still done today. Now during the Mabel, during the flood, the waters rose 15 cubits above the highest mountains. The water covered the earth for 150 days. The ark measured 13, pardon me, 300 amos in length and 50 amos in width. That would make its floor space 15,000 square amot. And since the ark was 30 amot high, and it was divided into three equal floors, each floor then would measure 150,000 cubic amot in volume. All numbers connected again to 15 with Miss Barcutton. The 15 cubits represents God's presence above the earth. The 150 days represents the 15 permeating all 10 aspects of creation. Now in the temple, there was a staircase that consisted of 15 stairs. It was used as a separation between the men's court, the court of the Israelites, and the woman's court, the Ezrat Nashim. During the services, the Levites would stand on these 15 stairs, playing instruments and singing. Now, according to some, the 15 Shir Hamalot, the songs of ascent of Tehillim, are from Psalms 120 to 30, 134, were so called because they were sung on these steps, again, going up a malot. These psalms were sung by the Levites as they ascended the 15 stairs in the Holy Temple. So we see the elevation of 15 from the physical to the spiritual, and the physical act of moving and ascending closer to God in the Holy of Holies, and closer to God through the music and the lyrics of the psalms. Now the Mishnah in Pirkei Avot states that a 15-year-old boy begins to study the Talmud at the age, again, of 15. There are 15 words in Birchat Kohanim, the priestly blessings. The blessings that we say over our Yontav candles, ca candles have 15 words. Pesach, Passover begins on the 15th of Nisan. Sukkot is on the 15th day of the month of Tishrei. Tu Bishvat, the Rosh Hashanah for trees, is on the 15th of Shvat. Tuba Av is on the 15th of Av. And this was the day that the generation in the desert realized that no one else would die for the sin of the spies. And also the day when all single men and women would go out to the fields to find their zivig, to find their marital match. Shusham Purim is on the 15th of the month of Ador. The Maral writes that these festivals are to teach us that when the nation of Israel were at their zenith, that they had acquired 15 levels of holiness, as enumerated in the Dayenu prayer, the ultimate sphere of holiness is represented in God's name of the Yud and the He, as we pronounce it, Ka. We don't say it as, it as it is. We also begin our ascent every morning when we pray. One of the very first parts of the morning blessings are the 15 Birchat HaShachar, Birchot Parmi HaShachar, the morning blessings. These are the first 15 of the 100 blessings that we should say throughout the day. The goal of the morning prayer is to make ourselves one 
with God. The Psuke de Zimra, verses of song, begin with the Hodu, whose opening 15 verses were sung upon the return of the Ark. The Psuke de Zimra section concludes with the prayer called Yishtabach, which is composed of 15 expressions of praise to God. The first two paragraphs of the morning Shema contain 15 verses. The Shema is followed by the prayer Emet V'yatsiv that begins by extolling God using 15 phrases, each prefaced by the letter Vav. The word Aviv or Aviv is spring, has a numerical value of 15. Pesach is referred to as Chag Ha'aviv, the spring festival. There are 15 parts to the Pesach Seder. There are also 15 steps in the Seder uh, that, on the song that we sing, Dayenu. 15 always represents the elevation from the physical to the spiritual. On the festivals, we have a requirement to read a minimum of 15 verses from the prophets, since 15 is the minimum number of verses that must be read from the Torah for the five people that are honored with the Aliyot, three for each. Only the living call God by the, his name call. The dead are not allowed to do so. As the verse says in Tehillim in 115, verse number 17, Lo hameisim yehalaluka, that the dead do not praise God again through that name of the Yud and the He. The Gemara this in Sota 49b gives us 15 signs of, which, of what the world will be like immediately prior to the coming of the Mashiach. If one wants to donate his valuation to the temple, there is a standard amount that is mentioned in the Torah, which would depend on both age and gender. For a man over the age of 60, the amount was 15 shekels. Now in the book of Yeshaya, the king Chizkiah is sick, and the prophet Yeshayahu comes to him and tells him that God has told him that the king should prepare for his death. Chizkiah turns to the wall in prayer, and God hears his prayer and tells the prophet to tell the king that he will live for another 15 years. In the tabernacle, the curtains on the east and west side were 15 cubits long. The Jews in the desert brought 15 items for the building of the Mishkan. There were 15 judges who ruled the Jewish nation. The Abarbanel and the Matsuda David say that the number 15 is a hint of the 15 prophets who prophesied concerning the redemption of the children of Israel at the end of days may come quickly in our time. And with that, we have finished an overview again of the number 15. God bless and be well. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you for coming.